A few years ago you might have read a headline, something like scientists teleport for the first time. While true, it's slightly misleading. Scientists didn't teleport a human, or an apple, or a paperclip, or a bacterium, no. They teleported a particle. particle. And even that's super ambiguous because what they actually teleported was the quantum state of a particle, meaning the direction of its spin. It's really more of a method of communication than teleportation. But that does hint at something rather dark for the future of humanity if teleportation of humans ever makes its debut. It tells the story of a machine that will kill you on one side of the galaxy and then years later create you anew from a completely different set of atoms on the other side of the galaxy. If we're to assume teleportation continues in the direction it's currently taking, it'll work like this. You, if the price is right, will pay your fare to go from Earth to Mars. You will likely step inside of a box. The reason for this box, however, is not just to make sure that all of your atoms are collected neatly. It also has the added benefit of removing the trauma element for the other people waiting in line. This is because to teleport you, we're gonna need to completely destroy your form. Uh, this will likely be extremely gruesome and painful, so before the process starts, it's likely an anesthetic will be administered. Then, the breaking down of your body will begin. After we tell Heisenberg in his uncertainty principle to kindly piss off, the machine will determine the position and state of every atom in your body. From there, it will store that data and beam it to another teleportation transit station on Mars. The atoms that once were you are now stored in a barrel with countless other atoms from other individuals, ready to create a new person whenever their data arrives. Over on Mars, you're being rebuilt Built atom by atom, slowly materializing, being created from the leftovers of whoever left this station before you. This may not sound all that bad to you. You might already know all about the ship of Theseus and the Cuddy Stark and you'll never be the same person that you were the day before, but it's not the only problem that teleportation has. With any new technology comes smart people who are willing to exploit it. Enter space pirates waiting patiently for you to transmit all of your memories Hooray. and personal DNA across the solar system, only to be stopped just as a 287 kilometer journey has just begun. With this information, they could recreate you, torture you, hold you for ransom, or just completely wipe it, and no one would know who done did it. That's assuming they'd want to erase that valuable data. They could also just scan through your memory and pick out all the personal information. None of your data is safe, being beamed through the galaxy. Not to mention the human mind has a lot of information inside of it. Roughly, it's thought that we can hold around about 150 terabytes of data inside of this thing. Uploading just one terabyte of data in current good internet connection takes 47 hours. And we want to do that 150 times. That's 7,050 hours or 293 days. And that doesn't even take into account the massive amounts of data that the rest of your body has inside of it. But let's say future humans figure out the storage problem. I mean, if we look back at what we could do in the early 2000s compared to what we can now, it's a pretty impressive step up. And if we can get past problems like quantum tunneling, well, we're gonna have better computers in the future. But not everyone's gonna use teleportation morally, especially if we take the Star Trek approach where if you can teleport, you can teleport wherever the you like, including into other people's homes. An invention like this would mean the end of property as we know it today. Ownership of stuff wouldn't be possible if theft was so easy unless governments can enact and enforce legislation quite quickly. And when I first thought of this, I was pretty skeptical that they'd be able to do it. I mean, laws take a long time to change. In the early 21st century, sodomy was still illegal in a large handful of US states. In 2003 Idaho, you could go to prison for the rest of your life for sticking your doodle in someone else's bum. Thankfully, that law was changed that same year and now with consent you can stick your doodle in any ho or bro in Idaho, yo! But, oh no, I don't think it will take them such a long time to change the laws when their precious stuff and their friends' multi-gazillion dollar businesses are being threatened. But people won't want something if they know it'll kill them. Well, then we'll make them want it. Even though it's now clear to most humans in the Western world that smoking is bad, we continue to do it, even when it's illegal for them to market their product to us. They still do. It's just very sneaky. They've been caught multiple times reaching out to people on Instagram and inviting them to exclusive parties where they're showered with gifts of alcohol and cigarettes. And the unspoken understanding there is that they'll smoke in the photos that they upload. So 
Maybe that's what teleportation companies do. We host parties for social media influencers, we bring them in and video them teleporting all over the place and looking cool doing it. Nevertheless, while influencers are a good start, we can only dream of what we could accomplish with the BP marketing team on our side. They turned an oil spill into a good thing. They also popularized the term carbon footprint to pass the blame of global warming onto citizens. It really is amazing what you're able to accomplish with a $600 million marketing campaign. Let's hope for teleportation companies of the future that they have that in their budget. All right, I think. My wife and I lived all alone in a little log hut we called our own. She loved gin and I loved rum. I tell you what, we'd lots of fun. What is up, my loyal subjects? Obviously, this video, as always, is sponsored by Telecorp. With a monthly fee of just $100, you can teleport to 20 plus countries, as well as get unlimited access to the water park on Saturn's moon, Tethys, owned by Telecorp, home of the universe's biggest wave pool. And since the park is owned by Telecorp, don't even worry about having to walk around the park because they have you covered with teleportation transit stations all over Tethys. All right, let's get back to the video. This new interconnected world will function completely differently to our own. I mean, for one, it's gonna kill a lot of services. If Skype isn't dead by then, it is now. And I mean, people can't just live in any city in the world. They can live anywhere in the, anywhere in the world. I mean, no longer will people out in the countryside or in developing nations suffer from poor education standards. Billions. A people getting high levels of education for the first time ever in our planet's history. It's, it's going to greatly increase, increase the progress of our, our entire species. species. But getting there could be a problem. Let's talk love for a second. Internet dating changed the way we find relationships. At, at first it was a taboo, but feel like teleportation might go the same way and have the same problem. In the beginning, people killing themselves to get places maybe looked down on. Eventually though, just like online dating, teleportation will become an everyday function of the Anthropocene. And while we're on the topic of dating, it's gonna become easier than ever too. It'll still be awkward, don't get me wrong, but if you can inexpensively travel anywhere in the world, well, the radius for Tinder might just have to be changed to a, what languages do you speak? As a species, we have a lot to think about before teleportation can become a thing. I've compiled a list of my own thoughts on teleportation and you could expect that video at some point in the future. <laughs> so this needs an outro because the rest of my work is lacking in that regard. I'd quickly like to say thank you for all of the support on the Rando Nautica video. I, I wasn't expecting my second video to get more than 10 views. So it was a genuinely nice surprise and you were all incredibly lovely in the comments as well. So thank you. Um, these videos take a long time for me to make. Currently, I'm aiming for one a month, but I prefer quality over quantity. So it's usually gonna take a bit longer and I'm sorry about that. Uh, but because of my infrequent uploads, YouTube is gonna punish me. So I'd like to say thank you to everyone who shares my videos around, um, harassing your friends and family to watch them and posting them on places like Reddit. It really helps me out. I am incredibly grateful to you. So that's about it. Tell me. If you could teleport, where would you go? See you next month. Now I'm still in school, I'm trying to get out. All you girls on my dick, cause I look like Cole Sprouts. Yes, young nut, I'm a real bad bitch. I've been tearing down a city, very bonds with the hits. Go back second grade when I pissed in my pants. Now I'm riding around with some cash in my hands. Still, I don't have gold plaques though. She's still eating on my ass like I had one. Imagine if I had one. Madrid, turn it up. I've been feeling up tight, pour another cup. Now every day I'm home watching Larry David. Girl calls, so I took my dick and I shaved it. I'm back up in the booth feeling reckless. Knock it out, then I cross it off the checklist. Wired to punch me in the face, let me breathless. Saw a little bit different from I expected. Never could have expected, but I clean it up real swift. Hollywood nut, man, that shit bust quick. I'm about 6'1, but my mind's 5'6. If you fuck with the kid, hit you with a chop six still. But I'm a good boy, now I get head with a Kahneman. This is a nut song, this is my theme song. At the game, they gotta put me on the Jumbotron. Just another day now, go ahead and sing the song. song.